Welcome back to this edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. I'm CDJ, joined once again by Tommy and JB Huskers. Guys, how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Doing good. Getting closer. Day to time, guys. Day to time. A couple news stories to get to that I'm sure people saw during the week, but we've kind of dug a little deeper, so hopefully we can solve some of these big mysteries and riddles. Okay, probably not, but we'll have a pretty good guess, maybe. The first one being something we speculated months ago. We thought that the game might be inclined to include Deion Sanders in some form or fashion, being how Deion and the Buffs really just captured the college football media's attention throughout the season, especially the first half of the year. So in early March, a video from Well Off Media on YouTube, that is a channel run by Deion Sanders Jr., it has been providing behind-the-scenes looks at Colorado football. And of course, this one video is about a 30-second clip of the Buffs, and I'll, I'll set it up, and then we will play it. It's the Colorado Assistant Athletic Director for Sports Equipment Services, Michael Smith. What a long title that is. He's visiting with Coach Prime. Uh, you've seen with a piece of paper. Uh, the part that got notoriety at first was at the end, Dion tells to says to Smith, EA Sports, we do business. The initial article where I saw this on the Buffs beat, thanks to jo Josh Tall, didn't really speculate on what was being said, but if you go back and listen very, very closely, you can make out almost everything that Smith says to Dion. So let's check out this video, and then I will go ahead and read what we were able to transcribe and see if we can figure out what exactly might be going with Dion and the game. Okay, I'm sure that was pretty tough to hear, but I will go ahead and read what we were able to figure out from our transcription crew uh, behind me. You can see in the office here. In the clip, Michael says to him, they put together a deal with you, and we can do an in-season release with the new uniforms, and if you want... We can send them all your stuff that you wear, and they can like, you know what I'm saying. And that's when Dion says the EA Sports, we do business. A couple things before I give you guys your chance to guess what's going on with this game of Clue here. What we know, back on ESPN.com, Michael Rostin on February 22nd said, no real coaches in year one of EA Sports College football. We also know that Dion is in Madden superstar mode, which you can see in this screenshot here. The defensive end, Arden Walker of Colorado, way back in late January, said he saw a sneak peek of Colorado's new uniforms. So that matches up with the quote of Smith's. He saw their new uniforms in late January and said they're sweet. I'm not going to lie. In terms of dates, CU spring game, April 27th, home opener, August 31st. So now that we have those pieces of information, guys, what do you think we may or may not have heard in that clip? Either they're going to have uniform releases or, again, could be DLC uniform releases throughout the season or something like that. Um, you know, I could see, again, it being a, a special deal to where certain schools get special treatment throughout the season and be able to, as long as EA has a copy of the uniform, you know, whether a, a physical version that they've scanned or or some other way, then EA will be, re be able to release it throughout the season. Um, I think it may be possible. You know, it doesn't sound like coaches are going to be in this year, but it sounds like it could be possible that Deion Sanders may have a part to play in Road to Glory this year, possibly. That's one of the things I thought of, too. Like, maybe he's a Road to Glory character, much like his Superstar Mode character. Initially, when this clip came out, I thought, well, maybe this is just a contract for Madden 25 to go back into Superstar Mode. But then when we heard about the new uniforms. It sure seems like when Tommy said that we're going to get maybe some kind of promo with the new uniforms. The one part that still we can't, I can't quite figure out he says, we can send them all your stuff that you wear and they can like, and then he cuts off with the, you know what I'm saying phrase before Dion says, EA Sports, we do business. Uh, the only thing I could think of with that, maybe clothing for it, create a coach. Maybe you can his glasses. coach, you can put these sunglasses, his cowboy hat, his coveralls. Initially, I thought, well, all this stuff is Nike, so why wouldn't they just get the stuff from Nike? But I don't think the sunglasses are Nike, that cowboy hat's not Nike, the overalls are not Nike. So that makes me think maybe something along those lines. Still very, well, it's, still a lot up in the air on that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's hard to really interpret that or, or whatever. We can just make mm -hmm. guesses. But it, the you may have been meaning the team, your team, mm -hmm. you, you guys kind of thing. That uh, mm. whatever uniforms you wear throughout the season, they'll be able to release them. That was my interpretation, at least. So uh, that makes more sense uh, than our guess. But well, but I mean, at the same time, you again, the, he the the guy talking to him is part of Colorado as well. So it's right. not like he's on the outside saying you. So right, he's not knows? EA rap. Exactly. So mm. I mean, again, it makes sense both ways for me. To me, like you said, it could be you know swag that Dion wears, or it could be uniforms mm. that the team mm. wears. Yeah, I mean, if it was something team-wise, he'd probably say us, not you. Right. 
because he's been in that role since Dion got there. I think he worked at Colorado before as well. So it isn't, he's not a newcomer. So I don't know. Now we're down to debating and figuring out pronouns on terms of the game. <laughs> you and we, <laughs> we're really grasping for straws. But I think we've settled it more than we knew a week ago when this story came out. That it seems like there's something with that DLC uniform, especially when you figure out Colorado has new uniforms coming this season. Uh, one of the community feedback we had on this was from EJ. He said that he believes that Dion and or Shadur will be on the cover. What a crazy ascension they've been on. Uh, based on the quote, I'm, I don't know if it's cover, but at the same time, I wouldn't I wouldn't rule anything out at this point, especially since we haven't heard uh, from Shadur yet if he's going to be in the title. Uh, during an appearance on Syracuse Sports with Brent Axe, ESPN's Kevin Connors confirmed his role in the game. It's much like I think everyone had kind of figured out and speculated. He will be doing halftime and in-game updates. Uh, that's his specialty on the network if you watch any ESPN broadcast. You've heard his voice. You've probably seen him in the studio providing updates and halftime reports. Uh, he had a bunch of other comments about the game as well. It is so unbelievably thorough. The team is so talented. There are so many individual small items in the game. On down to players wearing hoods out of the back of their jerseys, which some players do, which you wouldn't see in Madden. It's a fast game. It's an unbelievably thorough game. It looks, and the very little that I've seen looks amazing. Brent, I played the game more than any other. So the fact that I'm going to be in the game is a thrill for me. I'm unbelievably uh, proud and honored to be a part of it. I, I can't wait. I just can't wait to see it. Uh, among the other items he mentioned, he had 25 two-hour sessions sessions when he recorded, had just about every possible outcome. He talks about, again, there's so many details in the game. He talks about the players wearing the hoods out of their jerseys. He says, which some players do, which you wouldn't see in Madden. We had one community member who say that Madden actually does have the hoods. I'm not so sure that his quote wasn't just generally saying there's lots of details you wouldn't see in Madden, not necessarily just the hoods. The part that stands out to me is it's a fast game. It's an unbelievably thorough game. It looks, in the very little I've seen, looks amazing. He goes, I've seen snippets, and it literally, literally looks good. Uh, a couple times, he's pretty humble about his role when he starts off the interview. He says, I'm not the star of the game. And then towards the end, he says, my role, again, is very small. I'm a guy who turns on the microphone and reads some lines and rewrites a couple. And I think it's going to be really, really good. The part that stands out to me is the fast game. I know we don't know what that means. Uh, just when you hear that quote initially, what do you think fast game means? I know that I mean time wise, play wise, what what do we even think that means? I mean, initially, my thought first thought is gameplay is fast, as in like, you know, in past years, I think it was NC09 uh played really, really fast, you know, it was a high scoring affair kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I don't know if that's what he's kind of suggesting as well, that you have to be mm -hmm. kind of quick on the stick sort of thing, or if he's like you said, maybe it's a short time frame, but again, my first thought was quick on the sticks. It always seemed like NCAA was always faster playing than Madden anyways, and probably the fact that you haven't played NCAA for 10 years and you've been playing Madden all, every year ever since probably mm -hmm. is probably the little, little notices and in in, in in tweaks they've done to the Madden engine to make it differentiate itself from Madden is probably what's noticeable because you've been playing uh, you know, Madden for mm -hmm. 10 years straight. Now you're going into a completely different football game. Yeah. And to that point as well, you know, college obviously has a lot more no huddle. So, I mean, again, it plays faster just in that regard. I mean, obviously NFL is expanding no huddle, but college still trumps it, you know, to where some teams run it every single play. And I've heard of some people over the past week talking about their memories of the game from, you know, going to PS2 to PS3. And I've heard more than my share of people say in the, just the last week, looking around the media, you know, local and nationally, you know, remember saying the PS2, they thought the PS2 version played better because it was that faster. It was the more, you know, quick on the sticks than the PS3 version was, for example. Could it be something along those lines? I, again, we don't know, but like I said, there's so many different ways to take that quote. It's going to be interesting come May, June, and then July to figure out what he meant by that exactly. Chris Fowler, again, provides another nice behind-the-scenes update of his recording in the smallest room in his house, which still looks bigger than any room in my house. <laughs> uh, let's check out this clip. You guys, I don't know if you've seen it, so this could be your first look as well. Inside the no longer secret voiceover room for the EA Sports CFP 25, just crazy interest in the first little behind-the-scenes glimpse I gave. I'm told more than 2 million views on various feeds. That's insane. Uh, great energy surround of the game, so I'll give you a quick update here. Two more sessions this week. I've recorded the pregame setups for the new 12-team playoff bracket games, the on-campus settings, the four quarterfinals and two semifinals, and it was really fun to sit in this little room in March and do a national championship game setup. Of course, 
gamers are going to get to experience the new bigger bracket in the summer, way before it plays out on the field. And whoever you select in Dynasty mode and take to a national championship, Kennesaw State, Troy State, anybody, yes, to answer your questions, you will get a customized national championship shout out. If you pick Coach Prime and the Buffs and you win, um, you might get an extra special shout out. Uh, speaking of long shots, I recorded today this. Your defense forces and recovers a fumble in the end zone to win the game on the final play. It was a crazy high-energy call, but yes, that is in the game. I'm told that more than 10,000 players are in the game at 600 bucks a pop. That's more than $6 million in NIL commitments. More can opt in in a second window in the spring. So Arch Manning and others who aren't in the game right now uh, could reconsider and opt in. I will keep the updates from this little room coming. His little room is still bigger than anything in my house, so I'm pretty impressed by <laughs> pretty impressed by that. A couple of things that are worth noting. When he mentions the Dion coming, if you pick Dion and the Buffs, you might get an extra special shout out. So that tied in with our first point of the show that people think, okay, that confirms Dion's going to be in the game. Uh, my initial thought was, well, Chris Fowler is a Colorado alum, and I don't know that he actually meant Dion in the game. Just like in the past, we ways people talked about, oh, I played with Johnny Manziel and the Aggies, for example, on a, you know a certain roster year, for example. Well, he technically was not in the game, which like I don't think Dion is going to be in the game. I, I think he brought that up because he's a Colorado alum, so he'll probably get a shout out that way. Mentioned the playoff commentary, those home field games sounding different. That's uh, interesting because EA has to figure out how to make those games look good. We've never had a real life example. So good luck to them on that one. Uh, another, th I'm the second window. Uh, I was kind of the impression, and I think you guys are as well, that some of those articles said they had till April 30th, the players to opt in or out. Uh, he's mentioning a second window. I don't know if he's privy to some information we don't have, or maybe he just misheard something in terms of players opting in or out. Guys, what did you think of that clip? I mean, for the in terms of the second window, I think he's just kind of confusing that today is a cutoff versus April 30th is a cutoff or whatever. Mm. Like he's thinking that they've already had a closure of the window or mm. something like that. But uh, no, I, th I think he's just referring to the main window that we've all been tracking so mm. far. So again, like they've said, like you've said before, it's still plenty of opportunity mm. for Arch Manning or anyone else to still opt in. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays mm. out. But all in all, I mean, it's it's hard not to get excited, excited when he's talking about the game. Mm. I mean, just he's an exciting figure to begin with, mm. but just, you know, he's excited for the game. So it makes you want to get excited for the game too. Mm. Yeah, he's probably going to have an extra few lines for Colorado if you win with Colorado. I wouldn't expect it to be anything more than that. Obviously, if you win it with Kennesaw State, he may say throw in one line, but Colorado, he may throw in a, a, a 20 seconds worth of lines uh, mm -hmm. just because of how special uh, that is for him. Uh, so I think that in, in considering he's probably never going to be able to do that in real life, it's good to at least be able to do it in a video game. Thanks for trolling the Colorado people. I can't wait to sort those comments say, out, JB. Thanks a somebody lot. Sounds, somebody sounds bitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, they won They won four wins. They had four wins. So, we, we, you know, Nebraska had more than that, at least. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the April 30th date makes sense only because in order to uh, for the game to be physically printed, that would be kind of a good cutoff time that that's the last day and, and the, everything gets printed the next day sort of thing. Mm. So. Speaking of what's in or out of the game, it came out in this past week that the National College Football Awards Association had decided to opt out of being an EA Sports College Football 25, citing basically an unfair contract offer. They did state that EA is offering them more than they did for NCAA Football 14, but they felt that was not, a, not enough. The NCFAA president, Mark Walpert, who's also the executive director of the Maxwell Football Club, said there's an appetite for that game, and if brands are going to be represented there, we want to be compensated properly so basically with them out the awards that are believed to be out will be the Bednarik, the Boletnikov, the Davey O'Brien, the Doak Walker, Groza, Jim Thorpe, Maxwell, Outland, and Ray Guy. The Heisman will still be in the game that's been confirmed several times now uh, we'd heard that back in late February in that ESPN article and then the Heisman account also tweeted that they will be in the game that same day this news broke they wanted to make sure everybody knows the Heisman will be in the game so basically it seems like in this article they mentions that uh, EA basically said, if you don't opt in, we're just going to make generic awards. So we're, we had some of those in NCAA Football 14. Sounds like most of them will probably be that way again this year now with top position awards. Guys, uh, initially when you first heard that, what's your thought hearing that a lot of these major awards will not be in the title? At, at face value, I hate that they won't necessarily be included. I mean, again, I want them to get 
compensation for for what they feel is important to them. But uh, at the end of the day, that's not going to make or break the game. I mean, if my mm -hmm. player wins top receiver instead of some other award, then so be it. You know, it, it's it's the name doesn't matter that much. It's more just kind of the recognition of of how your you know how your players actually get awarded. Whether it's an officially titled award or if it's just a generically titled award or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I think they're overshooting their value, thinking they are worth more than they are because I, you know, <clears throat> I, it's just, you, you'd almost figure that you'd almost want to pay them to be in the game to expand your brand recognition to those that may not watch the awards the night before the Heisman mm -hmm. Trophy. You know, it, it it's kind of baffling that you're holding out for more money when you could have a lot more exposure to your mm -hmm. brand. I mean, how many people are going to, uh, if you ask somebody, some Joe off the street, what is the NCFAA? They're going to be like, you mean the NCAA? You know, they're right. not going to, they're not going to bat an eye. And so neither are anybody when they're going to go through uh, the awards once, uh, you know, your season ends, whether it be, playing by yourself or on an online dynasty with friends, which is always mm. one of the best parts of an online dynasty is going through the awards section. And I, th I feel like, um, you know, and I brought up, I brought this up to you guys when I saw this news mm. break, I was like, Oh, why don't you just name some awards, uh, bring in some guys like Dion and, and, uh, name the, you know, re replace the uh, defensive back, the, the Jim Thorpe one, just name it the Deion Sanders award and just make up your own awards instead of having a generic mm -hmm. best CB award, you know, and sometimes what kind of what Madden's kind of gone to with, you know, the, the players, mm -hmm. which I mean, they don't have their own titles or anything, but you just see best QB award and things like that. You know, I think this is a good chance for college, uh, for the college football game to kind of maybe put their own swing on things. I will say the one group that probably wants to see these in the game more than anyone is is actual players. Uh, if yeah, they're right. playing the game and and they're playing with themselves, they want to earn the trophy in the game that you know they want to receive the Blitnikoff Award or they want to receive the Debbie mm -hmm. O'Brien. You know, so it's going to mean it's something a little bit more to them. But for me personally, it's it's not going to be a big break, make or break. If they went with JB's idea of of naming it after former legends, then you know I think that's a good idea. It's kind of a, a nice little nod to legends of the past. Go back to your point, JB on. The exposure in the game i think that's a great point uh one thing that i thought of when i read this was you would think they'd want to opt in year one then if the game sold really really well then maybe they had some bargaining power because if they opt out and the game sells really really well and they there's not a lot of complaints publicly from the community saying we missed the awards then next year you can say hey we don't need them we can save we got our own thing here. now yeah we can save our own money people if people really don't miss the awards Maybe we don't have to. Now, I'm under the impression from everything we've heard from the like ESPN personalities, for example, EA wants this to be very detailed. So I would expect that they would go back in the future and try to get them. But at the same time, I think the NCFAAs, their bargaining power is by going in year one, in my opinion, and then seeing how it fares before asking for way more money. They're already getting a boost that they weren't getting for over 10 years in terms of money money coming in. Maybe that doesn't mean much to them, but I, I'm kind of surprised that, and I wonder how the does one guy make this decision? Is it a group? Is it all of them vote? That we don't know how that works out. Does ESPN pay them to say the names of the trophies on awards night? You know, I mean, see, I don't know who the how that partnership works exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a a broad licensing agreement for that. Yeah. But my my curious question would be: When was this decision made? Has EA known mm -hmm. about this for six months, or is it something that they just kind of? you know, the deal closed, you know, a couple of months ago or a week ago or whatever, uh, to where does EA have enough time to react? You know, if they want to put additional trophies, are they going to be able to, you know, create generic trophies for all these different awards? Or is it just going to be a text placeholder or something like that? That's a good point. Because I wonder why this article came out at this time. Uh, the ESPN article in, in February mentioned the Heisman would begin and all the bowls would be in and the playoff would be in. But he didn't mention any other awards. That should have been a red flag, maybe. But at the time, who thought that this would be the case? Uh, like you said, that the article mentioned that even if they decide to come in relatively soon, it might be past the point of no return. Like it might not be time to get the images and assets into the game. I did go through and look at some of the awards that are not members of the NCFAA that could be in the game. Uh, what was interesting is that the Lombardi is not a member of that group, and that trophy was in NCAA 14. So I wonder if that one will be in the game. Uh, it appears to still not be a member. As far as I can tell, you know, based off Wikipedia and Google, so it's not the most reliable, but that's what I was able to find. Uh, one that stands out is the Jet Award for Best Returner. 
that's one of those words that everybody tried to win. It's pretty tough in the past, at least, to return kicks. Everybody wanted that best returner. If you could get the real trophy and real award, that's a relatively new award. I think it's only been around for maybe 10 to 15 years. Uh, so maybe they'd be willing to go in, provided EA wants to go after them. Uh, what's interesting is that there's a Sean Alexander Award for Freshman of the Year that's judged by the Maxwell Club, and their director is uh, also the head of the NCFAA. So I would assume that that award, even though it's not part of the NCFAA, probably would not be something that EA would have an opportunity to go after if they wanted to get maybe these lesser trophies. I did also went back and looked real quick and looked at the awards that were founded in NCAA Football 14. Uh, I, like I said, I had kind of forgotten that the Buckus was not in there. It was a generic best linebacker and also best returner. Otherwise, all the rest of the trophies in there were named trophies. So we're looking at a situation where all of these, if you guys can see that, I know it's pretty small text. We're looking at a lot of generics that are going to be in that game and, and one real one at this time. Yeah, hopefully EA was on top of it. Uh, if not, I mean, it's going to be probably the easy way out, and it's going to be best quarterback, best you know, best player, and mm. you know, best wide receiver. And and unfortunately, it's going to be that for the first game. But hopefully, they were on top of that and did something to uh, at least uh, offset all the stuff from the NCFA. Another well, one is the Unitas Award because that's one that's uh, top upperclassman quarterback, and that's not part of the association as far as I can tell. So maybe they get best quarterback replaced with the Unitas Golden Arm Award. Well, and, and another thing I've just thought of is that, you know, for a lot of these, obviously they're, they're positional trophies. So you just create a 3D version of a player in the game and turn it into a digital trophy, you know, obviously spray mm -hmm. paint it silver, so to speak. But, uh, but otherwise you just kind of take a player model from the game, pose it how you want to, and then stick it on top of a trophy. Kind of like they did with the uh, best lat linebacker award. I remember mm -hmm. that being just kind of a, a player that looks like he's lunging for a tackle or something. Right. The community feedback on this is a lot of what we talked about. Uh, the fans, as long as the Heisman is in, they really didn't care. Let's go some of those community feedback here real quickly. Uh, my teams don't win. That sounds like my burner account. He said, I'm guessing the words will just be called best QB, best linebacker, et cetera. Not that big of a deal. KBez23 says they want money than what EA offered. I would assume they gave me a similar deal in 14, and they said no. Find common ground, get the awards in the game. Uh, Cloud Strife for president, I don't know what party he's with, says once they see how big this game will be after 10 plus years of hiatus, they will be back. This has the potential to be the highest selling game of the year. We live in a different world than we did the last time there was a college football game. Davi J, kind of surprised by it. A gamer champ, 23, says if no common ground can be met, just do generic awards name or use some of the commentator names that they already have. This is not a big deal to me, but I understand others who may want this in. Lorenzo Jordan says at least the Heisman's in. Hunter says how lame. John Cummins says like EA Sports is getting cheap. I would be curious if if EA is trying to kind of, you know, shortchange the award saying, look, you don't matter that much. So we don't really care to even pay you in the first place. So I mean, how much just, could it even be? That's yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, are we talking about $100,000 or, or $5,000? You know, what, right. what's the what's the real amount that we're talking about? You know, again, if it's more I mean, than they got in 14, then to me, that's in line. I mean, I mean, I don't know how much more they expected it to be. It I mean, outside of a couple of named trophies, I mean, the, a lot of, unless you're a hardcore, you know, very hardcore fan, a lot of those you may not be able to name, and but there'll be a couple of them that you're mm. going to recognize. But so it's like, how much money are you holding up for this to to, to leave it out of a game? Right. Uh, that was interesting. The, the quotes that came out in the article, uh, Walpert did say, there's an appetite for the game. We want them to be compensated properly. So when I explained that to the EA rep, the response came back to me that if we choose not to do that, they'll just make their own awards up and put them in the game. I'm very interested to mm. know how that quote went down. Was it one <laughs> of the... Was it who was being the aggressor there? Was it the awards rep saying, well, what do you can't have a game without us? Or was it EA saying you need to sign? Otherwise, we're just going to do our own thing. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> it comes across as maybe a power play by Walpert here. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. the first set of quotes, and EA is not going to, they're not going to talk about this period. They wouldn't, no matter what. Walpert's final thoughts in the article. My thought at that time was, well, you have approached us about the importance of authenticity in the game, yet you're very quick to dismiss awards, some of which have existed for eight decades. So how is the game authentic when you don't have the authentic awards in it? Well, I'll tell you right now, pretty authentic if they're going to have real players and all the teams. I'm sorry. I want all the awards too, but on the hierarchy of wants from the community, it's 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 below the teams, it's below the stadiums, it's below the players, unfortunately. But the pedal still he's putting himself on, I tell you what. I was going to yeah. say, I imagine he overestimated what, what their worth was, and that's why he put this quote mm -hmm. out there, hoping that mm -hmm. the fans would get back in his corner or whatever and mm -hmm. put pressure on EA. But 
again, I think most people are like just it. like, and eh, it's, it's, I'd love to have them, but I'm not worth, it's not worth holding up the game for it. Right. Yeah. I don't see any, it looks like based on, especially uh, our comments section, it doesn't look like there's pitchforks uh, on no. his side there. Yeah, if the Heisman was excluded, I think that there would have been. And the, see, the Heisman yeah, is part agreed. of the association, but apparently they maintain their own image and licensing rights. This is probably the downfall of group licensing rights. It makes it real easy to get it if the partner says yes. But then when you get a situation here where the partner says no and holds up all of those awards, I wonder behind the scenes if maybe the awards don't care. They, you know, the checks come in at whatever intervals they don't care. I'd be interested to know who decided this exactly and if any of these awards are going to behind the scenes saying to Walper, like, why did you do that? Why did you, why are you putting this yeah. out there? Why do you just say and, yes, and, man? And who's uh, no longer the NCFAA president after this year. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see if there's a change <laughs> there in the future. Prior to recording, there a little bit of news came out, but it's something we already knew. Uh, Chris Vanini of The Athletic tweeted that all the Bulls are expected to be in the game. We knew that, though, from the February 22nd ESPN.com article. It did say that all the Bulls will be in. Um, so I'm sure it's, as people are listening to us now, I'm sure the graphics have probably made the rounds for all the Bulls. They will be in. We kind of knew that ahead of time. Uh, to wrap up the show here in our final few minutes, let's do some community feedback. Uh, first, we'll get to some of the feedback from the last show where we talked about Herb Street teasing multiple announcements, for example, and maybe Arch Manning not being in the game. Kyler Kill says, uh, talking about broadcast teams, they will have to do it with Fox with the Big Ten. I want nothing to do with Herb Street. Fox's main two guys are so much better. Uh, JC's Pop Culture appreciated the reference, uh, appreciated us shouting him out. Chip Chipperson, 8609, says, whatever, forget Arch Manning. I think that's what those symbols mean. Yeah, that's what that, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. If we really want him in the game, we can just create Barch Nanning. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like we can't create any players who opt out, Chip. I, nope. I wish we could. Well, but, uh, but I wonder if you can create Barch Nanning. I oh, mean, maybe, you know, <laughs> like actually that name, you know. EA may, EA may create that. Oh. It, yeah, it's exactly. It, it's made to see what name they use. Uh, D'Angelo says, I just hope they come. 518, we get everything we need. I can care less about the side of the reporters right now. But for Dynasty Mode, that is something that makes it more authentic pre- and post-game interview. That's kind of like we mentioned. They have a role, but hopefully they can get to them next year. I understand why they're not in this year. And finally, uh, on our Twitter account over the weekend, we put out a community question. We know in the past, a lot of fans, when they pick a Dynasty of the Year, they pick a school that has a new head coach in their first year. They want to do kind of a rebuild in real time with the coach. So we put out a list of the... 30, I believe it is, uh, 30 or so schools that have new first-year head coaches in 2024. It was an interesting wide range of responses. Foster starts with and says, all of them. Well, he's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of guys a lot of time. dynasties. Yeah. Uh, Blake Sturden says, Georgia Southern. People forget how dominant Southern was in the late 90s and early 2000s at FCS. And That's outside coach. the rules. They don't have a new coach. Oh, did he, maybe did he mistype? Maybe yeah, he in Georgia he State? Stay, maybe, yeah. There's but a couple no, he's guys talking who, about Georgia Southern in the comments. So, oh, uh, well, there's a couple guys who who skirted the rules, but I'm not going to penalize them. Uh, <laughs> he wants to blaze the recruiting trail on offense using a spread option. Uh, the runs of Jordan, he kind of skirted the rules too, but that's okay. He's one of our number one fans in terms of responding. So, he says Florida State or UCF because he wants to win a national championship. Jeff, Holy Cross legend himself. None of them. I know he's going to pick Ohio State, but if I had yeah. to, then JMU because at least I've seen a game there. Uh, Soren Holly says James Madison because they're already one of the best teams to rebuild in the first place. I don't know who this guy is. Tommy got a burner. Some, yeah, <laughs> you got a fan account. You got a fan account there. <laughs> there I forgot to that? sign into my other account. So is that the one where you said something in bio in the response? Uh, Tommy says South Alabama. I've always had a soft spot for Mobile. Plus having Alabama, Florida, Georgia as recruiting states certainly wouldn't hurt. Cardiac dogs? Question mark. Mississippi State for obvious reasons. Joe Rasmussen says Tulane. Raven, Boise State, time to destroy college football with my immaculate coaching skills. Cheating. <laughs> At least he's honest about that. Uh, May says Boise State. Jared Oaks says Boston College, Illinois, App State. Jock James, I have to pick my New Mexico State Aggies just because we get looked down on so much. They had a great year last year. Then the staff leaves and half the, all the talented players transferred out. So I do feel bad for New Mexico State. Uh, Drewski says James Madison, cool stadium. They should have been in the bowl playoff hit discussion for G5 this season. T. Mitch is JMU. Ben, South Alabama, a fun conference, low stakes. Pepe Schultz, Schultz, the number one community guy after what he said for us last week. Arizona, new conference, fun quarterback, wide receiver duo. KBez23 says JMU. JMU's running away with this, by the way. Mm -hmm. Victor G says Houston in a power five and a recruiting power state of Texas. Tom says rebuilding UL Monroe would be fun. Densmore says he remembers playing in the leagues. Uh, Time Davey says San Jose State. 
Aaron Salzman says Wyoming, Trey Atkins says Michigan State. And we're right against the clock, guys. Uh, final thoughts before we wrap up the show. No, that spreads uh, JMU. I mean, they really won people over with the atmosphere that they had for game day. And then, of course, the story that was told there. So mm-hmm. not surprised at JMU. I always love playing a small school and try to just make it as hard as I can to, to kind of level up to the big school mm-hmm. eventually. So I'm going to I'm going to be in the same boat and go to a small school as well, probably. Yeah, my, my second and third pick would have had to have been UL Monroe or New Mexico State, mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, the the sisters of the poor schools of of Division One. So one stars. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just kind of really mm-hmm. have to work to build them up. So see some of these schools have new conferences as well, so which makes them a little more intriguing. Arizona, obviously new coach, new conference. You're talking about uh Michigan not a new conference, but new coach and that offense got so decimated by players leaving for the NFL and graduating and whatnot that you got to assume Michigan recruited well, but you're going to have a lot of young players on offense. That'll be fun. I like Wyoming as anyone. They're kind of local to us, kind of isolated. So recruiting got to work a little harder. So I think that might be who I would pick. So with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. Please check us out wherever you can find podcasts. Leave us a five-star review, a comment, a like, subscribe. We appreciate everything you can do. For Tommy and JB, I'm CDJ. Everyone, thank you for checking out the Gaming Tailgate Podcast.